So, ahoy, hello, <laughs> very happy to be here. Uh, thanks for having me. So now you might ask, apart from this wonderful introduction, why I am here, why I should give you today's keynote. So I have a simple explanation. Most probably, I am the oldest women in tech in the Czech Republic. <laughs> It's fine, yeah, uh, because I always wanted to be older, because when I joined my career in tech, I was 23 and I looked like 15, and it was a problem. <laughs> so uh, today I feel good. So, uh, but I don't have the clicker. Where is my clicker? <laughs> okay. So how should I introduce myself, apart from what you were hearing from me? I will tell you in basically three words. I consider to be the mother, and not only of my own kids, it's, it's more kind of allegorical. I, cons oh, super, thank you. I consider to be educator, because uh, educator, education is something where I found a passion. And I also consider to be women in tech, or a lady in tech, not that I am so much in tech, but I still, I still teach tech trends, and uh, foremost, uh, the tech is in my heart. You see the garage? Yes, I'm the girl from garage. I still consider myself as an HP -er because I spent uh, 25 years in HP. And yes, I was born into the engineering family, uh, which always helps. My mother is a chemist, and my father is an artificial intelligent programmer, uh, which is funny because he's almost 80. So you might say, like, where was the artificial intelligence those days? But yes, there was like, a, I would say, a night for artificial intelligence for those people like my father, but it was not uh, kind of uh, diminishing his enthusiasm. Uh, I will skip the rest because I will go to it later. I will stay here. Uh, <laughs> uh, people are coming to me, most probably as this kind of mother of tech, and they are asking me very basic questions. Yeah? Uh, they are asking me like, shall I found my own company? Or shall I start my own business? Or shall I continue my studies? And I'm always telling them like, thanks for coming to me. Thanks for your trust. But I can't make decisions on your behalf. What uh, I can do with you and for you is I can basically train your brain. Uh, this is why my speech today uh, has the name like thinking about our own thinking, because I believe that our brain is a muscle. And if we train the brain, yeah, we basically can make our decisions for ourselves. And uh, those people are approaching me and I always start with them on this kind of note. <laughs> so I'm always asking those people, like, do you remember when you were very little? Yeah, not so much like this kind of uh, age, but maybe like two, three, yeah? And do you remember that uh, some of those uh, kind of attributes were already given, yeah? They were given for you. Uh, we can't change what will be our skin color, what will be our parents, birth, gender, names, ethnicity, uh, even our history, cultural roots. But the rest, we can change, yeah? we can influence, especially with our thinking. And I'm always telling them, and now there is a test. So uh, our family values determine our personal values. Have you realized? Uh, we are taking... Uh, we hate Chinese because we say that they are basically copycats. Yeah, they are copying technologies, they are even stealing technologies. But we do the same in our families. Yeah, we are actually stealing the best behavior models from our grandmothers, grandfathers. I was very lucky that my grandmother, actually, the grand, grand grandmother, uh, was an entrepreneur. It's a huge role model for me as a lady. Uh, my father, as I told you, artificial intelligence, yeah? Uh, but also my grandmother, she was a post office uh, assistant, but she 
uh, was bringing those human values, yeah? The kindness, generosity, putting the family together. So I am a big believer that our family values determine our personal values. Now we can go ahead. And that our personal values are actually our algorithms for life, yeah? You are coders, you understand this. So we are basically determined what we are bringing us to us yeah, from our families. Uh, the only problem is, and now we go to another click, <laughs> that we are very weak in our critical thinking. That's why I love teaching my mentees about how to think, how to think as a baby, how to be curious. Uh, uh, we are very good at thinking about others, but we are super weak about thinking about ourselves. Yeah? So how to improve this? And how to put my mentees into the past where they are discovering themselves, uh, uh, I would say, uh, shaping up those algorithms that they are bringing from their families, and then they just go as a racket, you know, up and down, up, up and up. <laughs> we can go. So uh, I believe, and uh, I most probably this community is not the community where I, dis, uh, I need to stress this, uh, but I believe that the life shrinks and expands in the proportion to our courage. Yeah, we need to be courageous. Uh, ladies, even more than gentlemen, because we are basically going against the trends and against the stereotypes. And I also believe that nothing wonderful will ever happen if we are not risking. And it's not about money. We are more risking our reputation. Yeah, we are more risking our emotions. Yeah, people can basically tell us, uh, uh, I don't love you, but we should always risk it if you see a person who, uh, who is attractive or if you see a job which is attractive. And I think what is the problem is that our personal values are not in a good fit with these social values. And let me explain. I think that our society is very individualistic. Uh, we, even if we read the newspapers, we read about people who are successful as the individuals. Uh, themselves, but we very randomly read about the team success, community success, yeah? and I think this is the problem, this is the tension in, in us, in the values. And I was just uh, two weeks ago on my vacation, and I read a fabulous book uh, by uh, Kevin Treffron, who is the who was uh, the biologist, uh, very helpful in DNA discovery. And I remember his quote, and I think he is super right. The maturity of our society can be measured on three things. How we behave to our kids, how we behave to our seniors, and how we behave to our teachers. Yeah? And I think no one here will disagree. The problem is that those values are not in the society. Yeah, and we, as this kind of beautiful community, we need to kind of uh, keep changing it. My childhood, as I am super old, happened in normalization, yeah? Which might sound awful, which might sound awful, but uh, I think every childhood is beautiful, yeah? So no need to worry whether like I was happy or not. I, I was very happy, and plus I was having an advantage that um, our uh, cousins and uncles, uh, they lived in uh, the US. So you see that uh, already as a small kid, uh, my dream was to basically be close to them, be successful as them. So it was like my huge motivation to make it uh, to the US. And then, uh, next slide, yes. Uh, I was super lucky that actually when I was born, things were moving technologically. Yeah? Uh, people on the moon, uh, then the first email was sent yeah, between four universities at the, at the Western Coast. And then uh, Moore's Law, which is good and bad for the society because Moore actually told us that the computers will be increasing their power exponentially and we as human, we will just stay and we will basically develop linearly. Uh, but for me, it was very motivational to see those changes and to live them through. And I'm very grateful that I did. And plus, 
I had a big role model, and it was Marie Curie. You don't have enough of those like female role models, but it was a good role model for me because my mother is a chemist, my father is a mathematician, and she was basically both, yeah, chemist, physicist, uh, mathematician, and uh, uh, scientist. Uh, and uh, what happened on top of the changes in political, technological, uh, was also, and this is the next slide, changes in our society, yeah, uh, which most probably influenced me the most because I was ready and I'm very uh, grateful to my parents. Uh, I was like having a good education in biocybernetics, some knowledge of English, uh, when, next slide, <laughs> uh, the borders yeah, of the Czech Republic fell down and I was free as a bird to basically go to my first uh, exchange, university exchange to Benelux, to the university in Ghent. And uh, I discovered that like Czech Republic is too small for me and I immediately kind of started uh, have kind of potential or ambition or how to, how to position it to, to go further. You can go further. <laughs> And then what happened, I met uh, the person of my life, or husband of my life, and um, it's, uh, uh, it was good, yeah, because I, I was kind of continuing in this kind of maturity, found, finding myself, and suddenly I was like more complete yeah, in, in the couple with a fantastic gentleman. <laughs> and uh, I, I if, if you remember just one thing from my presentation, just remember this, yeah? we live our lives forward, but we understand them backward. Yeah? It's, uh, we are, uh, I, I, I am discovering a lot of coincidences which were so good to me, but I was not putting uh, the, the right pressure or precision uh, to them in, in the moment when they happened. So uh, let's, uh, let's do my career pass very quickly. <laughs> Yeah, it was like first child, second child, HPN comeback. Uh, I was uh, uh, the in charge of uh, uh, the merger. Uh, then I was promoted to Africa. Then I was promoted to Silicon Valley, uh, and then strategic changes. Uh, yeah, we can go further. It's not so important. Uh, uh, the uh, the picture is important for this community of ladies. Because uh, when this picture, uh, the previous one, uh, when this happened, uh, I, uh, <laughs> I, <laughs> okay, now it's it's working. So now I need to go back. Yeah. So in this moment, I basically did, uh, I would say, a community hack for all the females, because I won the business person of the year competition. It was 2011, and I won it uh, as a lady but it was for all, yeah? so I basically beaten all the boys, which was good. <laughs> so uh, what are my career learnings? I, I think uh, you want to hear it from me as a, as a kind of matador and veteran. So I believe in a very fast career start. Yeah? Uh, if uh, my students are asking me, like Santa, shall we like now care for life balance or shall we study? Uh, or shall we like uh, found our first startup? I say you have like 10 to 15 years to basically arrange everything in your life. Yeah? Have babies, have career, establish your reputation, travel, go to the best universities, apply for the best jobs, for the best internship. So I am not the person who will tell you like start looking for your purpose. No, go for it. Yeah? Uh, we were discussing it yesterday with Ilana. Uh, pretend or make it till you fake it till you make it. Yeah, uh, be uh, be more self-confident than you are, and do a very fast uh, start of your career, and go to the place where your business has the best conditions. Yeah, so if you were the skier, go to Aspen. Yeah, if you are a tech person, go to Silicon Valley. Why? Because. If you are there and you can be there just like half a year, you basically compare yourself to your cohort, yeah? And then you come with the experience and then you come uh, with like a very increased boosted uh, self-confidence which can then uh, like fit all your life. 
I also believe that our first career is basically driven on our personal talents and skills until we realize that there are colleagues which are bringing additional skills. Yeah, so uh, you can run this kind of Russian uh, roundabout, but you can also run this centrifuge in your career. Yeah? And this will happen if you basically have fantastic colleagues who are bringing uh, additional skills. And then you realize that you are happy in your career, the happiness kind of increases, increases, and suddenly it stops. It's similarly as with money. Yeah? You are making money, you are making money, and suddenly you are on some threshold, you don't need more. And more money is not bringing you more happiness. More power is not bringing you more happiness. So what to do? You can retire. <laughs> uh, but uh, my explanation is that uh, our first career runs on our egos yeah, and on our personal individualistic talents and skills. We are working hard, we are rewarded, uh, we have pleasure from like promotions, awards, money, houses, blah, blah, blah. And we work on this algorithm of life, which is bringing us very high. And then something happens. We are coming into the dip. Yeah? And uh, it happened to me. I was surprised. I was uh, 48 years old. I am a very positive person. And suddenly, I was like sitting in my room. Uh, not that I was depressed, but I was somehow thinking about my own thinking. Thinking where I am really good at, what I like doing. Yeah? I was kind of losing motivation uh, on my like first career. And then what happened? I kind of started thinking yeah, how to get the inspiration from Silicon Valley because I had some experience from there. And then I discussed with my two kids because they are grown-ups, yeah? Uh, my son, he's 25, my daughter, she's 23. And I can tell you, if you have uh, those kids and if they are smart and if you basically dedicated a lot of time to them, to their education, they are your extended brains, yeah? So my son, he told me, Mom, don't be sad, yeah? Start the best program at the university and I will help you with it because he was just finishing his university in States. So I listened to him and we did it. And my daughter, she told me, Mom, go and start the best internship program. So young people, and it can be like tech people, creative people, analysts, coordinators, they can basically get the first experience in a very organized, systematic, fantastic way. So, uh, yes, Maslow is working there. Yeah, it's, uh, it's just Maslow, but uh, of course I knew Maslow. I, I was mentoring like 20 years. But the problem, and you, you read it even in Daniel Kahneman, this uh, book, Thinking Fast and Slowly, the problem is that you can coach all the people of the world but you are a very terrible coach for yourself. So, what I think is in this dip, you are going into the thinking phase. Yeah? You are assessing the situation, you are assessing your capabilities, you are assessing your values, and you are planning next steps. And it's very important for all of you because most probably I will not do another career change. Yeah? I am old. So, sh shortly to be grandmother, hopefully. Uh, but, but in your generation, as we live in this exponential world, and as you will be most probably living till 100 years, yeah, the longevity is really kind of, the prognosis of your longevity is fantastic. Most probably those career changes will be like coming twice, three times, three times, four times. So uh, you can learn from me. So I, I call it second breath, but for you, I expect that there will be also third breath and fourth breath, maybe even fifth breath. <laughs> so how I see that uh, this kind of works psychologically, at least how it worked for me. Uh, my first career brought me the happiness. 
My second career is bringing me joy. Uh, what is the difference? I think we are as a species. We are traveling from happiness to joy. What is the difference between happiness and joy? Happiness is, for example, if you go to McDonald's and have like a good hamburger, or if you promote, if you get the promotion, yeah? or if you have a good sex, yeah? this is like a happiness, happy moment. But joy, it's something like, uh, how to say, nurturing your baby or uh, watching the mountains from the top of the mountain and somehow becoming transcendent uh, and somehow feeling that you are one body with the nature. So I think it goes from happiness to joy, from ego to community, which is wonderful that we are like talking about it in this wonderful community, from some kind of algorithmical behavior to humanity. Yeah, you are discovering on you, you understand yourself, you understand your emotions, you understand other people's emotions, so you have like better empathy, okay? and you go from selfishness to generosity. It's fabulous. So I, I prepared some kind of uh, cheat sheet for you, yeah, once you are in this moment that you want to change the career. Uh, you should know that yourself, you are your own biggest obstacle. And what you need to do is to do this change with others. Yeah? Discuss with people, get their feedback, get their input. There comes the role of mentors, coaches. But don't be scared that you don't have money for mentors and coaches. Yeah? You can just find your mentor on the internet and listen to his or her speeches in terms of how they are thinking. Yeah? It's about thinking. Act it out, don't figure it out. Yeah? Don't plan, just try, keep trying. Uh, we are uh, intuitive. And look for people, not for jobs. Yeah? Go where you see you are a good fit. I would say it's about culture, but uh, I hate the, the word culture. <laughs> so again, it's time for critical thinking. And uh, I, I just see those changes around us, yeah? People are changing. Uh, uh, one of our KidsXO members just switched her career from belly dancer to chatbot programmer. Yeah. Uh, uh, my very favorite uh, journalist, I love her book, Who Moved My Blueberry? And I use this book for my mentoring program. She started uh, teaching mathematics. Yeah, and uh, one of my Romanian colleagues uh, from Ulet Packard, she was a financial analyst in my team. Now she's the pilot of the planes in Romania. Yeah, so I think those are the callings and second breaths. So what is my second breath? I decided that I will transform Deloitte. You might say Deloitte, why Deloitte? It's such a boring company, yeah? like audit and things like that. Not at all. Deloitte is the company where you have all the professions which exist. Yeah, you have engineers, you have lawyers, uh, you have mathematicians, you have psychologists, everything. I will transfer this company, and doing so, I will also transfer a lot of young human brains. How I will do it? Now I hope that uh, we will see our video. Yes? No. Any management guru would say that talent is the most valued resource. Hi, my name is Vansh and I am a member of the Deloitte Innovation Team in the Czech Republic. We believe in nurturing young minds, expressing creativity and creating opportunities. We achieve this by creating a world of equal opportunities with a platform like SheXO, where women come together to create an impact and change the outlook of work. Nurturing young minds through Kids XO, where leaders and innovators interact with kids, share their ideas and create future leaders. Hiring interns with different skill sets from all educational fields from across the globe. Economics to filmmaking, Ireland 
to India. This is how we better our society and build a future world step by step. And as Peter Diamandis says, the best way to predict the future is to create it. So, uh, yes, I created, uh, as my daughter kind of told me, I created, uh, I think, the best internship program in the Czech Republic. Uh, we are uh, receiving students from all around the globe. You see some examples of the universities. I hope that we have also some universities from Brno. Not see it, but definitely we do. We have also Anička Blechová. She's in our team. Uh, next slide. And uh, what we do with the interns, we are not just uh, putting them into the regular jobs, uh, but we created, uh, we call it Tomorrow by Deloitte, I, I call it a internship kindergarten. Uh, you go there, you are interviewed, recruited, onboarded, and then we are doing a team assessment uh, with, with the help of Gallup. Then we do forums. I don't know if you know or what is this forum principle. It's basically uh, discussing what were your achievements in the last month, what are your projected achievements into the next month, and where you have your fears. So those people are getting into this kind of community thinking and they are able to help each other. Uh, then we do project management and CR, which means that all those interns are very welcome to come with their own projects, which they can do under the umbrella of Deloitte. We are not saying no. And what is this CIA? This is the Summer Innovation Academy. So we are teaching those interns all those soft skills, presentation skills, but also web design, coding, even this bastlení, uh, uh, how, how to say, this baker, baker's market hardware, putting together some kind of crazy hardware. Uh, and then Gallup result, and when uh, all those interns are leaving my team, uh, they are actually closing the loop, telling us uh, what worked for them, what not, so we are increasingly or continually improving. So, conclusions. I told you, yeah, I told you that I will disclose what were my best life choices and how I understand my life, because I understand it just in the backward. So going to Silicon Valley as the mecca of tech professionals definitely made me more independent, self-confident, and also, I would say, calmer. Yeah, because I, I knew that I did it. It was fine. Yeah. Chapter close. Uh, the most important topic is find a life partner with whom I share love, values, and money. Uh, I think if, if you are looking for your love, be careful, because sometimes you love the person, but he or she has different values and different views on like how to behave with the money. Yeah, so I think it's very important. And uh, last but not least, try to receive the joy from the joy of the others. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Santa. Uh, just stay with us. Um, yeah. So, um, I will give you the microphone. Uh, it was a really beautiful talk. Um, I think that everybody is just thrilled um, by the things they've learned from you. And uh, I think that uh, it would be great to hear first what should be the first step if somebody just decides. Because the mindset is the step zero, mm -hmm. right? Yes. But after the step zero, where should they go? What should they check? Like, if there is something to, okay, I can register to this class and this is the first yeah. step, they can do it today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, they are ready to do that today. Yeah. Maybe tomorrow they won't, so we should tell them. So, uh, basically, I still like work on myself and how I do it. I listen a lot of podcasts and I read a lot of books. Uh, I can uh, do some recommendations yeah, uh, during the day to you because, uh, of course, like all the people are different. We are having different talents and we need to have uh, different approaches uh, to our education. But I think what is really important is to go into this cycle of like lifelong learning. And uh, when I uh, left HP, I actually participated in six e-learnings. I went to the best universities of the world. 
Stanford, University of Michigan, University of Pennsylvania, and I selected, and others like Copenhagen, I selected uh, areas which are really important for me, and uh, not only which are important like professionally, but which are somehow important for my heart and for my humanity. So I would uh, suggest to do the same. It's, it's basically for free, uh, but uh, nothing is for free. Uh, I think uh, as you are getting older, like I am aging, uh, you are uh, discovering that the best currency you have is the time and your health. Yeah? So think about what you can achieve with the help of others and with the help of those e-learnings, books and podcasts. I think that you can achieve a lot yeah? uh, because everything is like uh, uh, what, what is the difference between a human and robots is that we are very adaptable and once you get this kind of I would say wind yeah, or the second breath you are unstoppable yeah? you have such a huge energy suddenly from one morning when you like lay in your bed and you are kind of looking for your motivation you are like wow yeah? you go ahead like a rocket uh, like an engine and you are unstoppable so I would say find uh, like put your plan together like three bullet points yeah I want to achieve da -da 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 -da, and then go for it and don't over engineer it uh, life is simple and very as, as Daniel Kahneman says we are actually thinking intuitively because we have those algorithms we have those values yeah when we start thinking deep we are in trouble but you should kind of uh, be able to switch yeah, from thinking intuitively to thinking deep. So. But uh, I don't have uh, worries for you. Uh, I am also a big believer that those conferences are helping because it's not only about like finding where to go, but it's also with whom to go. Yeah? And those people in this room, they have relatives, they have friends, and they are very happy to introduce you to those, yeah. So we use those networks. So it would be my. It's it's not simple. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's very good. Uh, we would also like to take some questions from the audience. Um, for the rest of the day, you will be using the EventT app. But for the like plenary, uh, we just invite you to ask questions. So is there any hand that just wants to raise now? Let your hand raise if she wants to. <laughs> uh, I will tell yes. you one. Uh, yes, over there. Okay. Yeah, uh, sometimes uh, we we'll, we'll actually were talking about your partner, about your children. So tell me, where did you get the time, you know, to combine everything together? You know, like work-life balance, that's a quite a fancy word today, but, you know, that's really something behind uh, So my answer to this is honest and maybe surprising. I didn't plan to have any children. Uh, I plan to be like a crazy scientist, yeah, like a Marie Curie. Uh, until the moment I met my husband, and then I said to myself, like, it would be such a sad for the humankind yeah, not to create babies with such a beautiful gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, I have to tell you that uh, the kids are difficult. Uh, they are definitely stopping you in your career. Uh, each kid uh, actually stopped me maybe like by two years and after each kid I actually went to zero and then uh, went back to my career. It's frustrating, it's annoying, uh, but I can tell you that most probably there is nothing better than to have a kid who is like a grown-up, yeah, like young adult who can basically give you advice and uh, make you joyful. Uh, I think that um, uh, the joy from kids is actually bringing me to this idea to have more kids in Deloitte. Yeah. Because I, uh, like Aichka can maybe confirm, I don't differentiate too much whether it's like my biological kid or my kid in the team. Yeah. It's, uh, all those kids are so uh, full of potential yeah, and different talents. And, and uh, I think uh, my biggest joy is to see them successful and not only in Deloitte. Yeah. Let them do what, do what they want to do. So uh, don't, like my advice to all those beautiful young ladies, don't postpone your kids because of your career. Yeah, do them 
and then the life will solve it itself. <laughs> uh, it's just about good project management and uh, good kind of uh, uh, logistics. Yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you for this answer. It's I think it's actually uh, yeah puzzling many. So it was actually great that this this question came. And we, I would like to take one more question from the audience. I can so, uh, I can also tell you that um, uh, every moment when I was uh, getting promotion, I, I remember this uh, promotion to Africa. I was so happy about it because um, I. I love Africa, yeah, and just the, to have the opportunity to work in those like 50 countries, it was fabulous for me. But when I announced this uh, to my daughter, she was 10 years old and she was crying. So I was happy, she was crying. Those situations are there and uh, I'm always telling to my kids in Deloitte, uh, you can't have it all. Yeah? You need to do a lot of compromises and there will be situations where your kid will have uh, uh, like concert of her life or a sport match of his life and mommy will be not there because she's in Africa. Yeah, those are the situations. But I don't have the trick how to do both without any compromises. Yeah? I, uh, and I am not feeling uh, sad with myself that I somehow prioritize my career in this kind of first moment of the career and then now I think I'm my much better mother <laughs> than I used to be. Uh, because there are advantages of being some kind of fast mother. Because you are giving uh, bigger trust to your kids and also faster capabilities. For example, my kids, when they were 10 years old, they were able to cook for themselves. Yeah? And, and not only like spaghetti, but <laughs> rice, gas, which go, uh, all those like Czech cuisine. <laughs> So uh, I think it's also about trust, yeah, building trust. And it's not only in our families, but it's also in our companies. Thank you very much. Um, if there is one quick question, we can take it. Uh, otherwise, actually, we use the question time really well. Yeah, I would like to thank you once again. Thank you. Thank you.